Hey guys, welcome to another Home Lab series video today. In today's video, we will be talking about NFS performance stuff. Um, so, you know, you'll probably get to a point if you've ever used NFS to kind of, you know, just as a file system, it'll just grow. You're just gonna have the share that will just grow and grow and grow to a point where, you know, like even listing files in, in a directory that has, you know, like hundreds of thousands to millions of files takes a few seconds and could even take a few days depending on how much you have in there. Um, so, you know, this comes up to be a, you know, a major problem in scalability and issues and trying to, you know, figure out, you know, if I can't delete all these files, how do I make it faster, right? Um, so I've been doing a little bit of research this last week and I wanted to kind of create a video on a few of my findings and really just one of my findings in this case on how you can imp uh, increase at least the read performance um, by caching it, uh, right? There really isn't much of a performance fix on that one that I could really tell. Um, but from like, you know, a reading standpoint um, or like listing, you know, file operations, um, you can definitely cache it um, using cached files D um, on your system. And I'll show you how it works and we can do some time comparisons and see, see how it is. Um, but also depending on your use case, this might not be the solution for you if you're looking for better NFS performance, um, depending on how you use it. So but if you know that your systems, for example, if you're doing like AI or like any like data, you know, reads on the system and you know, it's going to be, you know, like, hey, it's going to read this file like 300 times in like a second. This is probably a, probably a good solution for you. So, um, but if, if it's not, let me know in the comments. So let's get started. We'll show you around and let's, let's see how it works. Okay. So I have an NFS server and an NFS client. We created these back when I was creating, like, you know, uh, NFS stuff for my home lab series. So we're just gonna reuse them. So to give them, give a little bit of background, what we have here is on this client, we essentially mount the server where the share is to mount NFS share, just NFS defaults zero, zero, no, nothing too fancy. So I can go to mount NFS share, and this is the share that is on the server um, itself. So there's a directory called test and in this directory we have files and in this case i made it so that there are two two hundred thousand files two hundred and one one uh two hundred thousand and one files um now that's that could that that actually in my opinion does seem like a lot but you're depending on where you're at or what you do um you know you could easily have millions like trust me like 200 is like nothing um when you when you start comparing you know like years and years of, of data so what we'll do here um is we will first do some like time comparison so like if i were to just do an ls of this directory we will do time ls it will go through list all the stuff and we can get the real time. So in this case, it took about, you know, 2.3 seconds to essentially list the whole directory. But, you know, for the most case, it isn't too bad, right? Like 2.3 seconds, you probably won't really notice. It, it was a little bit slow, but not too bad. Um, now, imagine this was like 2 million. This is like 10 times, you know, 20 seconds. You can do like 20 million and then, you know, depending on how it scales, obviously, you know, but you can see how this easily adds up the more files you have, right? So what we'll do here is we will install cache, cache files D, which is just a piece of software um, that you can just install on more or less any Linux box that I, I, I've seen so far. You, even Debian, you can just do apt get um, install cache files D also. By installing it, there will be a configuration file that you can see here. Um, I think it's Etsy cache files D .com. Um, and this is where you essentially can set up your, you know, settings. Um, this is still kind of weird for me. I, I don't fully understand the settings just yet. So don't quote me on like any of this. You might have to do your own research. Um, but anything that's cache will go into this directory that, that I get, it will, you can, do tags so that you can tag different things that you cache. Um, then you got brunt, b run, b call, b stop. And then you got f run, f call, f stop. And you can see how the percentages for the runs are the same, the calls are the same, and the stop are the same. Um, so essentially, if it, it would be if the like disk space is less than 10%, um, then it wouldn't 
do anymore. So this is where you need to like really make sure you don't run out of disk space and stuff like that. So don't set it too high if you're you know expecting. Um, and essentially, run should always be greater than call and should always be greater than stop. Um, same thing here. So I need to do a little bit more research, obviously, on on how how this part works. But if you're just you know setting it up and just trying it out, I think the defaults should be fine. Um, unless you have really specific, you know, policies that you need to follow. But in this case, this is my home lab, so I don't got specific policies. If it fills up, it fills up. Um, now, what we need to do is uh, we'll enable cache file Ds um, so that it starts up on boot. And we will start it so that it actually is running. Um, we can do a status of it. And we can see that it's active and running. Nothing too fancy, you know, just any any other uh, status. But to make sure that we it actually works, we actually have to update our mount and actually include a parameter called FSC in our mount. And essentially, we would need to actually remount this. Um, so that it actually shows up. So we'll just do a mount A, uh, and that should hopefully remount it. If it doesn't, we'll just um, a mount and then remount. Um, but you can verify this by doing proc fs f and fs fx volumes. Um, okay, so the fsc is enabled. So yeah, I will actually have to unmount nfs share. No, oh, I, I can't be in the directory when I unmount it. Unmount it, and then we'll just mount it again. So, oh, that's probably why I didn't remount. I didn't reload it. Um, but now I should be able to mount it again. Um, run the same command here, and you can see now it is being used. The catch file D is actually being used. Um, so a little bit of a fun fact, you can proc fs fs cache stats um, and this will kind of show you some stats on like things that have been acquired cookies and whatnot um, there's like a whole like kind of dictionary explanation on all these I don't really know too much about it I just let it run right um, but this will be important to kind of take a look at so what we'll do here is we'll do the same test that we did earlier that took about like 2.3 seconds right um, we'll go to mount nfs share and test We'll do the time again, and we'll just do an LS. So this will go through and grab everything again. So, you know, 2.4 is about the same that it was the first time. But if we were to run it again, because now all the files have been scanned and possibly cached, we can run it again. Um, and depending on the cache, it might have been there. So now we got, you know, like one second. So things are caching here. So now instead of two seconds, it's like one second, two seconds depending on you know where it is in the cache um but you can see i mean a second difference isn't isn't too bad right um so you can see now it's like if i consistently do it it's about 1.2 seconds so i i you know saved a second if it's not reading um the system itself um and we can actually go to proc fs cache stats cache Ooh, proc fs fs cache stats and we can see that it did acquire, um, you know, 200,000 files over here. Um, so it actually is looking and caching all of that. Um, so you can see we do save some time because it's like really, you know, not too bad. But this number will definitely get a way better um, caching when, you know, it's being used more often um, as well as if we had more files that would, you know, it took more than two seconds, right? Um, but for the most part, it's pretty simple. You probably have to play around with it in your systems, but so far from what I found, um, it does, it does seem pretty good. Um, and it does seem like if it's caching, you will definitely get a performance increase here. So, you know, went from two seconds from the first hit, the second hit immediately right after with the cache stuff, only 1.2 seconds. So I saved a second on 200k files. Um, now. You can ex you can extrapolate a little bit from there, but um, that is just something that I kind of found. Um, FS cache is pretty cool from what it seems. I haven't really seen much. Oh, and then 
blasting. If you are trying to see where the cache files are, they are actually located in the FS cache where we saw in the config. So if we go to cache here, um, there's there's no files because actually I didn't I didn't uh, I just ls stuff. Um, I actually there, there's zero byte files. I don't know if it's caching not caching because there's zero byte or if I need to um, mount NFS share test. Um, yeah, that, that's gonna take a few seconds. <laughs> Cat zero cache FS cache cache. Yeah, so it, it didn't actually pull the data um, because I didn't actually read the data, um, but it did cache, you know, like the, the system stuff um, for the file attributes. So, but yeah, there you go. So if you're interested in trying to increase your NFS performance for reads, um, check out the cache files D and see if it helps with yours. So if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.